Hey everyone, welcome to the 23rd series of the Ion from the Logic of Sense. In this chapter, Deleuze presents his two opposed readings of time, Kronos and the Ion, but he's very sly about presenting Kronos because he does it from the point of view of Plato's philosophy. And he, he starts out with Kronos as if Kronos is the only time there is. And then he shows um, the reason for presenting an alternate reading of time, the Ion. So Kronos is the time of the present. The present fills everything in Kronos. Uh, the past and future are only relative to the present. And so he calls the present an endurance or a duration so that you can expand the present to encompass more of the future and more of the past. So every present lives inside a vaster present that has more of the past and more of the future relative to the original present. And when you get to the point where everything is just present, there is no future or past, he calls that God. So he'll say that Kronos is circular. It's a circular encasement, with that encasement being God. Kronos, the present, is where mixtures and blendings occur. Everything inside Kronos is in some way corporeal. This is where causes are. And he'll call the divine present, the uh, present of everything, the unity of all the corporeal causes. And then he starts to call that Zeus. He gives it the Greek mythological name for God, but he'll also call that cosmos. So, and at one point he'll call that the cosmic Zeus. Kronos is the regulated movement of vast and profound presence. But where, Deleuze asks, does it draw its measure? Is there a way for the present to measure all these bodies, to measure the unity of these bodies? And this is where he's slyly referring to uh, the ideal forms of Plato because this is how uh, things were measured from Plato's point of view, is how close they got to a divine form. But uh, in the depths of Kronos are um, things that subvert this present measure, things that are measureless. He calls this the becoming mad of the depths. And he'll use platonic terminology to describe this becoming madness of the depths. He'll call it simulacra, which uh, for Plato, it means it's deviated from the divine form. It's now a copy of the divine form or an, a representation, an imitation, but it's not, it's moving farther away from that. So the notion of God being the one who comprehends the past and future in a divine present all at once, he's going to uh, reference a philosopher named Bothius in his book, The Consolation of Philosophy. Bothius was a Roman senator, but he was known for uh, reconciling Plato's philosophy with Christianity. So um, in the enemy, so to speak, in terms of uh, Deleuze and Nietzsche's project of overturning Platonism, he'll say that the Stoics recognized two kinds of mixtures, um, the white mixture, which conserves as it spreads, and a black mixture, which uh, changes, which is, is subverts as it goes along. Um, and you'll also call these the good mixture and the bad mixture. So he's giving them like moral qualities like you find in Christianity. And um, uh, to me, it, it sounds like he's talking about um, order as the good mixture and uh, chaos as the bad mixture. So Deleuze will say that this becoming mad of the depths is this subversion of the present is how Kronos tries to kill itself. 
So Deleuze uh, starts to get very, he starts to personify Kronos. And um, so it's this becoming mad of the depths, um, according to Deleuze, is Kronos trying to kill itself, trying to end. And this is how I see how he's trying to uh, reverse Platonism. Um, and then immediately he goes into introducing the ion as this necessary new element. So Deleuze is then going to turn to a Stoic philosopher named Marcus Aurelius in his book called Meditations. Marcus Aurelius was also um, an emperor of Rome, circa the second century of the Christian era. And he's going to say that Marcus Aurelius um, often had to distinguish between whether something was a good mixture or a bad mixture. And he wondered um, where does the virtue of the mixture comes from that determines it being good or bad, or where where is the health of this mixture? And Deleuze will say he needs another element for this, and this is his excuse to bring in the ion. Um, and he'll even... Um, say that uh, he's also going to refer he's also going to refer to a book by Plato called Parmenides um, where Plato uh, sort of refers to what Deleuze will come up with as the ion in, in terms of a, a becoming a becoming madness of the depths um, skipping over the present so it's only there for an instant the reasoning being that the becoming only lasts for an instant before it becomes something else. However, uh, Plato also says that there is a now of the becoming. Deleuze then shifts into talking about the ion. As opposed to Kronos, uh, the ion is a straight line. The, the ion is infinite in that it goes infinitely into the past and the future, um, but it's limited because its present is only instantaneous. It's, uh, it's in the present for an instant and then it splits, it divides into the future and the past simultaneously. The ion as the straight line articulates the frontier between language and bodies, between propositions and things. And it has its face turned in both directions toward the states of affairs of bodies, and then also toward language, towards um, expressing the sense of these bodies. Deleuze will call the ion the eternal truth of time, or the empty form of time. Now, the empty form of time refers to concepts he developed back in his previous book, A Difference in Repetition. And um, I'll list um, pages where you can read about it there, but it is exactly, he's not calling it the ion there, but the empty form of time is elaborating that the uh, what he's now calling the ion in the logic of sense. So it's worth reading to get more background upon it. He also connects this empty form of time. He says it creates a crack in the surface. Um, so meaning that the frontier, but he also, again, in difference and repetition, relates it to a crack in someone's identity. So he, again, in difference and repetition, um, refers to the story of the crack up by Fitzgerald and to Under the Volcano by Lowry, which we discussed in the previous series. Deleuze wants to know what's the difference between the ion and the becoming mad of the depths. And he'll say that it's an orientation. Um, he had referred to the becoming mad of the depths. He had referred that to the god Saturn. So we're hearkening back to the three orientations of philosophy, the philosophy of the heights, represented by Zeus, or the cosmos, the divine present, the philosophy of the depths, the becoming madness of the depths, which is Saturn. And now the ion brings the becoming madness of the depths up to the surface. And this is Hercules, the hero. And that's the difference. Whenever something comes up from the depths to the surface, it necessarily changes. 
the ion, this incorporeal world of surface effects allows for the possibility of language. It allows language to become independent from the body. And what this language expresses in its independence is sense. So sense grounds language, as do pure events. Pure events and sense are the same thing, according to Deleuze. Sense brings that which expresses it into existence. So there are three kinds of presence. There is the present of actualization, what he earlier called the good chronos. Then there is the bad chronos of the becoming madness of the depths. And the third kind of present is the present of the ion, which is only an instant because it immediately subdivides into the present and the future. Now, this instant is what he also called earlier the aleatory point or the paradoxical element. This is the, uh, the quasi-cause where the Stoic sage can use this instant to make a counteractualization from from some event that's actualized as uh, differently. The present of the ion, the instant, is always displaced along the line of the ion and always missing from its own place, whereas the event always has a quality of excess to it. In other words, there's more to the event than comes through in the present actualization of it. So part of the slyness of Deleuze in this chapter is that I believe he's suggesting further reading. Um, he refers to Plato's book, Parmenides, twice. And in the book of Parmenides is a dialogue between Parmenides and Zeno. And Zeno is considered the founder of the Stoics. And also, um, earlier when he was talking about the divine present, he uh, referred to it as Zeus. And he said that Zeus is also dia, D-I-A, which is a Greek word meaning a cross, or he has it as through. And then the translator put in the French, uh, la traverse. And there's a reference to Diogene Laetrius's The Lives of the Philosophers, but it's just a number. It's seven uh, and then another number, which you would think is a page number, but there's no um, edition listed or anything. But the book number listed is uh, talking about Zeno. So it seems to me there's a suggestion to read up on Zeno, the founder of the Stoics. And there you'll see how the Stoics uh, conceived of time, and you'll see um, how uh, Deleuze is arriving at the uh, arguments that he is. And with that, we'll see you next time.